what's going on everybody welcome to another Monday Night Raw review and this compared to the crap show that was uh, Friday Night Smackdown was a better show so besides having some earlier in the day uh, you know showings and a recap of you know the pre with the rock and Smackdown and stuff Cody Rhodes come out to start out the show, and he basically responds to The Rock and his comments on that 21-minute Instagram slash uh, Twitter promo, and then his promos in the ring. And the gist of it is he told him not to talk about his dog, but also that he uh, that he basically has been give he was. He laid out a challenge for The Rock, and The Rock turned it down. Instead of accepting his challenge for a one-on-one -on -one match, he wants a tag team match. This would lead him to bring out Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins will come out and ask Cody, and tell Cody, you know, I've been telling you for weeks that I have your back, that I'm, uh, I'm going to be your shield, I'm going to do all this, and that I just need to know where you have mine. And Cody, and Cody agrees that he will have his back. And he said, good, because he just got cleared. He just got medically cleared 100% of the bill of health. He's good to go. And that means he will be on Friday Night SmackDown. And he just needed to know if Cody would do the same. And Cody uh, basically turns to the camera and said, well, then that means I have a message on my own. That I will be, it's, be, it's been too long since you've been humble. Because he mentioned how Rock said he only had $7 to his name before WWE became calling and it's been too long since you've been humble and you for, you seem to for, have forgotten what it feels to be humble and be like that person again. So he's going to go to Smack, he's going to make a wait and go to SmackDown and give him his answer along with Seth Rollins in person. Thus, that was your promo. And that was a good promo. Actually, it was a, they, it was, it was, well, it was, that was shorter than what the promo was, but in all intents and purposes, it got the point across. It, you know, it, it did its job. Unlike what Rock took damn near the whole hour to do his promo. Um, we did get the first match of the night, which is Dominic Mysterio versus Gunther. And this was a fun opener match. Surprisingly so that Dom got a lot of more offense than I thought he was going to get. But yeah, he got some offense in it. I ain't gonna lie. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. Dominic Mysterio. I like how Gunther ripped off Dominic's protective pattern so he could slap him directly in the chest. And for some reason, Dominic wanted to get into a slapping match with uh, Gunther. But, yeah, he actually had some pretty good offense against Gunther. Not not nothing Jay Uso crazy, but it was still, for Dom, it was crazy. But... Gunther would pick up the victory, and um, and he would pick up the victory via he would be a power bomb. Then he submitted him with the Boston Crab or the Walls of Jericho. Um, then we had Diamonds Control backstage of Dakota Kai, EO, and the Kabuki Warriors, and they would get confirmed by Adam Pierce because Adam Pierce wanted to know what why it was there. And with Dakota Kai reminds Adam Pierce that as the Kabuki Warriors are the women's tag team champion, they could go. <clears throat> He go to each brand, and that they they're not here to cause trouble or anything. They're just here to scout competition, and that's they heard that Shayna and Zoe been complaining, so they here to scout them and they match, just to that's all it is, just to scout. And he said, uh huh, I'll be watching you. But he would get they would also get interrupted by Cisco who wanted to talk about the Intercontinental Championship match potential match at WrestleMania with Gunther. Um. Then we would get that informated match, which is Kaden Carter and Katana Chance versus Zoe Stark and Shayna Blazer. And this was a fun match. This was a this was a fun match. This was a good showing for Zoe and Shayna, and someone for Kaden Carter and Katana Chance, um, with Zoe and Shayna picking up the victory. What I will say about this, I said this. You will see this in my. In my wrestle, in my wrestling pit podcast uh, review of Monday Night Raw, well, I did get into detail, but I would say a little bit here 
is that I kind of I, I feel some type of way how they they shouldn't have took the tires off of Caden and Carter and Katana Chance and they shouldn't put it on the Kabuki Warriors because we've been here with the Kabuki Warriors we've been there down this route and I feel like uh, Katana Chance and Caden Carter are the tag team that should be champion and that you was in that you forced to build the division around and just and you took them off of them right when they was getting going but like i said i talked more about this in depth in the wrestling pit podcast video that we did but um yeah the downs control would then come into the ring and tell Shane blazer and Zoe start that that they would after they defend their championships uh, after they successfully defend their championships at uh, at Roadblock on NXT, they will come back Monday Night Raw to defend the championships against Sam Blazer and and uh, Zoe Stark. And they and Sam uh, took the mic from Dakota and told her, "See you then." Now the thing about this is, uh, they kind of spoiled who was going to win because the graphics for next week just says it's going to be, and I'll say potentially between who. If the Kabuki Warriors or nothing like that, it just says the Kabuki Warriors versus Shane and Blazer and Zoe Stark. So I'm like, so did you just really give away that they were gonna win tonight at Roadblock? Spoiler us, they did. Um. So yeah, then we get um a Judgment Day backstage promo where uh Judgment Day is turning to Dominic Mysterio. Uh, Rhea is kind of like telling Dominic, I told you so. This is what happens when you go up against Gunther. But Adrade appears to also check in on uh, Dominic Mysterio before he has his match later on tonight. And that's been advertised. And Dominic says we need to keep an eye on Andrade because uh, he could be a potential new recruit. But it's, uh, it's rumored that Andrade is actually trying to is like the rumor storylines that Adrada is actually trying to tear Dominic away from Judgment Day. So, moving on, we got the third match of the night, which is Becky Lynch versus Nia Jax. And this was a this was a good match. Predictable because I predicted how this match was gonna go last on my raw review for last week. And I predicted how this was gonna go. So yeah, it, it exactly and I was right. It went that way. They had Becky and Nia put on a good match. They had two botches. The first botch was Becky's fault. It looked like she came off the top ropes wrong and she couldn't get the full effect of the missile drop kick. But um, that second botch was Nia because when she, when Becky again came off the top ropes, Nia wasn't just in place. Like she was just a little bit too far off from Becky's little flip um, die, whatever you want to call it, into a pin. But other than that, the match was good. Uh, Becky got some good offense in. Nia got her usual big woman offense in. And speaking of which, she uh, they were fighting on the outside, which would lead to Nia dominating Becky for a little bit and throwing Becky into the ring. She tried, she tried to catch her breath for a little bit, but she turned around and Liv Morgan, just like Becky last week, was standing on the uh, on the on the ring, not the ring, ever, but the barricade, and she dived off of it, attacked Nia, causing Nia just to win this match via DQ. And then she would get into a verbal war with uh, Becky. And I, do, and I will say this. I like how they, what they doing with uh, Liv because this is giving her a little bit more edge. I like that. This is what you need to make her a, a credible contender for a title. You need to give her a little bit more edge, make her a little bit more serious, and give her, make her look a little bit strong. And that's how they did here because she went into the ring and basically dogged Becky by saying that, oh, what, it doesn't feel good, huh, when you get interrupted. It don't feel good, do it. Cry about it. And then she walked away. But Becky got mad and basically grabbed her, turned her around, and started jabbing with her. But Nia would pull both of them down and beat them up to truly stand tall to end the segment. Which, um, I say this in my, um, in depth in my review for Rest of the Pit, uh, for Rest of the Pit podcast that, uh, in our raw review video that Nia interacted with a, with a fan more than, I ever seen uh, a female uh, star do. I see, like, it's usual for male stars, but I've never seen a female star interact with a fan that much. And it was in a healish way, but it was still a lot of interaction. 
Um, I want to see. Uh, oh yeah. So basically, they after the match backstage, uh, Liv and Becky was arguing, and Becky was basically telling Liv that where I where I did last week was to get revenge on Nia. And you just happened, you know, having a match with her when I did it. But when you did it, you wasn't trying to get revenge on Nia. You were trying to get back at me. That's the difference between what, what I did and what you did. And that you talking about you want, you want me to cry about it. When he said, how, she said, how about instead of us crying about it, how about we settle this in the ring since you're looking for a fight? And how about we settle this in the ring next week? And she said, and, she, uh, and Liv gladly accepted the match. Which would we make official? Which would have been, ow, I can't talk. Which did get made official uh, for next week. So, um, Adam Pierce uh, in the next match would be Andrade versus Apollo Cruz. Apollo Cruz just been. I I said this in my wrestling pit uh, podcast review video for Raw. No, I'm saying that a lot, but um. I did. I for, all forgot that uh, Apollo Cruz was drafted to Raw and that he was a Raw superstar because he got drafted and they pretty much didn't do nothing with him since he been drafted to Raw. I'm just like, oh yeah, he really did. Okay, but um, before the match started, Adam Pearce made his announcement. Uh, before he made the announcement, as he was getting ready to do, he would get confronted by JD McDonough, who wanted to be, uh, who wanted to talk about Gunther in the IC title. So Adam Pierce made this announcement uh, before the match started, is that the match there there will be a um, gauntlet match to determine the number one contender for Gunther's and the kind of championship match, a championship at WrestleMania, and that match that gauntlet match will be Chad Gable, Sami Zayn, Bronson Reed, Shinsuke Nakamura. <clears throat> JD McDonough and Ricochet, and they will all be, <clears throat> excuse me, they will all be uh, fighting to see who would go. Uh, more on that in a bit with Chad Gable, but I just wanted to let that be known that that was announced. Um, uh, Drada and Apollo Cruz had a quick little, a quick little match, nothing too special. This was uh, Apollo did get some offense in uh, just a little bit, but. Uh, but Andrade, this was more. This was more so built about, built around him, and he uh, did his thing. He hit, he hit his finisher, which I forgot what Michael Cole called it, but he hit his finisher, and um, yeah, he was the winner in that match. Pretty good side match, nothing to complain about. Uh, Sami Zayn would then cut a backstage promo where he would talk about how his inclusion in this Gauntlet match is his path to WrestleMania. There is no other path and that he needs to take this path and he needs to succeed in this match because if he don't, he don't know, how, he won't or probably won't, He don't, in his mind, he won't know how to be at WrestleMania. He don't see the, another path. But he would get interrupted by Ivar who basically told, who basically was upset him with Ivar and um, Valhalla who was upset that Ivar was not included in the Gauntlet match, even though he, even though he should be over Sami Zayn, and he knows that he could beat Gunther, but he knows and Sami knows that Sami can't beat Gunther, um, and he says, "Well, I know I could beat." Sami says, "I know I could beat you." And how about if you want to, if you want to test that theory, meet me out in the ring later on the night, which will be, which did get made official for later on in the night. Um, then we, we had a we had an interesting uh, women's tag division promo where Natalia basically was talking about how they need to take off the kid gloves. They need to they need to stop being uh, being uh, they need to be unapologetic because I guess it start it, it truly started with um, uh, Candice LeRae and Andy Hartwell trying to figure out how they get to their next level, how they get into that title picture like saying and them is. And they need to figure out something now that they they, they she don't they don't need to do nothing because the indie said something about uh, just getting better and they'll get their chance later. And she said there might not be a later. We need to do something now. And that's when Natalia said something about being unapologetic. She got into a little hillish mode, trying to blame um, Tegan for what she uh, 
for what she has, uh, you know, for throwing her over the uh, ropes at the Royal Rumble. It was a little bit of heels. And Tia even tried to remind her, you're the one who tried to throw me first. But she said, you know, she said, I'm the veteran, listen to me. And they go to go talk strategy. And Candace takes to heart with Natalia said, maybe, maybe she's right, maybe we didn't need to do that. But Maxine Dupree and... Um, uh, I I still can't remember what the girl's name was from it. From um, I had the same problem in my uh in the re- the raw review for Wrestling Pit podcast where I can't remember. I could remember this uh uh, uh, uh it was right on my uh uh, uh uh it was right on the tip of my tongue. I was getting ready to say her name and I can't get it. Uh, Niles, uh, is something Niles, whatever her name is. Um, her and Maxine tried to cheer up uh, uh, Candice LeRae and telling them that they they will get back there. They're gonna look fabulous, but Candice LeRae kind of like almost turned hillish on Maxine, saying that she said, "No offense, but why would I take advice from somebody who barely had who barely had three matches and can't lace up my boots?" And uh, which I think she says a little something else too, and it it hurt Maxine, uh, and they, and Candace walk off, and Andy Hartwell was just like, "Oh, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what's gotten into her. I I'm gonna go talk to her and I apologize again." Um, and Niles tried to co- uh, conf- uh, confront comfort uh, Maxine Dupree. Now, with that being said. Now we get to the, this next match, which is Judgment Day of Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus Imperium, and this was this was a banger of a match. This was match of the night. Um, Judgment Day did they thing? It they took a wish two times in this match, and I mean in tonight we're having Dom and Gunther, and then now Judgment Day is Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus Imperium. Two two matches that had heel versus heel, and it's usually a uh, mixed bag. But sometimes it does pay off, sometimes it don't. But it paid off both with Dom and Judge the rest of Judgment Day, where Judgment Day they let the crowd choose who would they cheer for and who would they boo, and they choose to they chose to cheer Judgment Day, and Judgment Day play, you know they Damian Priest and Finn Balor they played into that by wrestle wrestling as baby faces. While Imperial wrestles as heels, so they let the crowd dictate who will be the heel, who will be the baby faces in this match. Now I like that. I really do. I really do like that. Um. But yeah, this was a good match. This was a great match with um, with Judgment Day getting the visual thanks to Damian Priest hitting the South of Heaven on Giovanni to secure the victory. Uh, we did get a backstage promo with Drew McIntyre. Who basically, uh, who basically was told said that um, Seth Rollins didn't listen to him, but that since he's a, he's a grown man, he could do what he want. But he will say this that he's a uh, spotlight hog. He's he's addicted to the spotlight because his focus should be on the World Heavyweight Championship and Monday Night Raw. But yet he he wants to get involved with the bloodline and all that. So you know what he said he doesn't care, and that's that's on him. And that he's going to beat Jay Uso later on tonight as well. Then we get uh, Sami Zayn versus Ivar. This was also a, a, a good match. Um, a good big man versus little man match with Ivar and Sami Zayn. A lot of kickouts, a lot of spots. With Sami Zayn hitting the Haluna kick on Ivar for the victory. Uh, but Bronson Reed would attack Sami Zayn afterwards. And call well not call to DQ, but you know to stand tall to end the segment. Even though Sammy did win, um, then we have uh, Gunther who was being asked, who was being interviewed by Sammy, and asked about how he feel about this Gauntlet match to determine his number one contender. And he said it's a big thing, and as it should for the Intercontinental Championship, it should be this big thing, and that he's glad that this is happening. But he would get interrupted by uh, Chad Gable, who who told him that. For everybody else in this Gauntlet match, it's just about they roll to WrestleMania and how they're gonna be at WrestleMania. But for him, it's much more than that. For him, it's about 
he he well he actually started off by saying that he hate the that condescending smile, but more so he hate what he but he could get past the smile. What he can't get past is how he assaulted him as a man by calling him a bad father and how he uh puts uh he made his daughter cry. So he said for him it's about taking that title and putting it around his waist and taking that smile off of Gunther's face and put it on his daughter's face because for him it's just much more than a road to WrestleMania. Then we get the main event, which is Drew McIntyre versus Jay Uso. This was a this was a great main event match. Jay Uso and Drew did their thing, and um, yeah, this I just the only thing I had about this is that they went for the same finish twice in in two weeks. No, it made sense last week because he was going up against Gunther, and he it was for the IC title, so that made the impact. They did what they needed to do to set up Jay versus Jimmy, but they did again here, which is was just less of an impact. But I still give it a pass because it's just their way of setting up Jay versus Jimmy for WrestleMania, and and I I get it. That's why I give it a pass here. Though I will say I don't like them. I will say this. I don't like you using the same finish two times in a row. I don't like it, but I give it a pass on certain occasions because it, when it makes sense to use it. And what I mean is Jimmy Uso, right when uh, Jay, like he was about to beat, Gun, uh, beat uh, Drew McIntyre yet again, Jimmy comes out with a distraction, and which allows which allow him to get uh, Claymore. Uh, Solo will appear, but he would get chased off by um, by uh, Cody Rose, and then after he got uh, the uh, Claymore kick and beaten, uh, Jimmy would cut, would grab a chair and come to the ring. Look like he was getting ready to attack uh, Jay, but Seth Rollins would come out and chase off Jimmy, and then he would turn around and get Claymore, and pretty much Drew ended the show by standing over. Uh, Seth you know, taunting him and telling him that this is this is your fault and this is what's going to happen to you at WrestleMania in, in a sense you want to get involved with the bloodline. All in all, I would say with everything that happened on this show, this show was was good. It, it actually had a decent amount of time with promos and matches, something that SmackDown failed to do last week. So I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 big ups. But uh, you let me know, you let me know in the comments down below what you thought and if you enjoyed my review of this. You know what do? You hit this button right here for all of my WWE reviews. And if you enjoy the video so much, you want to support the channel. You know what to do, guys. Hit those buttons. And as always, hit any one of these videos for more of my amazing content. But don't go anywhere because I got more. I got reactions coming your way and gameplay too. So peace. Mm -hmm.